Hello there and welcome back to the studio today. So today we are going to continue the local color pass. So that is the first color pass or should we say local color stage. Um, so the paint is still wet on the face and we still have the um, color value web established on the palette from yesterday's episode. So if you would like to know exactly how I mixed up these colors, uh, you can feel free to look at yesterday's episode. So on the palette here, we are going to recharge the color value web, especially here for the uh, local flesh tone. So starting off with the same color we had before. So the ivory black, the alizarin crimson, and that's gonna be for our darkest dark, okay? Now we're gonna move up to our cadmium red medium and our sap green together. And then to recharge this area, we're gonna use the um, flake white. Remember flake white has this property of which it allows you to use more of it without raising the value too much, uh, thus allowing for a thicker paint. So we're gonna use the sap green, a little bit more sap green. And, um, if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can feel free to scroll down to the description box down below. And if you would like to uh, contribute to this channel and purchase uh, some of the paints that I'm using here, the same type of paints and the brushes, or some of the brushes that I'm using, I have links in my description box down below, affiliate links to Amazon. So if you would like to uh, contribute to this channel and purchase some materials of your own, uh, you can feel free to click on those links and purchase from Amazon. That would really help me out. All right, so now recharging the palette uh, for the hands. So today's mainly going to be about the hands. I, I think I am going to apply some color to the arms, but I won't really focus on it too much. The hands are a little bit uh, they're very similar in terms of the local color to the uh, to the face that we painted yesterday, but I think they're a little bit, um, should I say a little bit darker in value and a little bit, um, I think they're a little bit pinker. So we're gonna use the lizard and crimson a little bit more. And yesterday I said something about uh, you can tint the uh, value web, the color value web, and that this is how you tint it, just getting a little bit of the, uh, the paint. There we go. All right, so now we're going to start off with the uh, the shoulder, the clavicle, and move our way down towards here. So I'm going to run through this area much faster. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is oil out the areas that I'm going to work on. So I'm going to use the Neo McGill Medium. And this, what this does is it applies an extra layer of oil. See how we're getting those values back. Um, it also just helps to, uh, it helps with the layering process a little bit. You know, it just makes the paint kind of flow uh, a little bit more easily. And you only want to oil out the areas that you're going to work on. I don't want to have to, you know, oil out the entire thing. So just the hands and the arms. So remember the uh, the purpose of the local color the local color stage is to you know, introduce the average color within a certain region, and then once that stage is completed, then we will go in and uh, look for more uh, elaborate colors by relating colors to one another. So with a uh, a different brush, so we have three brushes here. I have a light a light light brush, a middle tone and a dark brush. So right there, we're gonna be pushing the plane for the side of the, uh, the shoulder here. A little bit more of a pinkish color here. Though I am trying to keep the color uh, variations to a minimal. All right, so that, see automatically it's starting to build up the light very nicely. So I'm gonna to switch to my half tone brush. So this will be my designated half tone brush. I'm gonna tint the middle tones a little bit cooler even still with the sap green. And see that's still a little warm, so let's go with ultramarine blue. That's much better. So I again the the idea is to establish the average color within a given shape. 
there are two ways to look at color, okay? There is, um, you know, the color of the light. Uh, so is it sunlight? Is it, uh, you know, morning light, evening light outside? Or, uh, you know, the condition of the light. And then there's the local color itself. Well, what color is the apple? Or, the, you know, what color is the beach ball? Or whatever item you're painting or object you're painting. Um, now, I'm not saying that I'm ignoring the... Uh, you know, the fact that it's a kind of warmish light coming from here and a coolish light coming from there. In fact, I'm going to put in that kind of coolish light. The idea is to set up the process into a series of stages, and each stage prioritizes a certain thing that needs to, uh, you know, be done to to build onto the painting so that you can end up having a much stronger painting. And again, I am doing some formal writing on this technique. I'm going to be calling it uh, Yupari's Classical Approach or Yupari's Classical Technique. I think I'm going to stick with Technique. So there we have a little bit of the light coming from the other side. See how very little can go a long way? All right, so now, again, we're going to move very quickly. So I'm going to use the halftone brush again. We're going to fill all of this. And now working our way towards the arm, I'm going to use the halftone brush again, though we're going to get a little pinker, so a little more of the Alizarin Crimson Permanent. And we're going to let the underpainting show through, so we're going to let the underpainting do some of the work. So we don't want to paint too opaque. So now that area is going to get a little darker as it turns away from the light. And now you see very quickly uh, we have you know, established a, a foundational color ground on the arm, um, you know, the arm, the shoulder, and over here. So we're going to just do that here, a little bit of a side plane, very much just using this one right here, the same color. I'm going to switch to the light, light brush. I'll put in this light. I think that'll be it for that. So now I'm going to get myself a chair, sit down, just so, just so I don't have to, you know, look down here to paint. And now we're going to spend the rest of the time on the hands. So now I'm going to have a uh, light, light brush, a middle tone brush, and a dark brush. So we're starting off with this light. So um, like when we were working on the underpainting, I mentioned that this lighting scenario is a little more uh, complicated. So that means that there is a light source coming from this direction. That is the window lighting. There is ambient light here from the electric lighting in the room. And then there's the main light source coming from an electric light b beneath her. So uh, illuminating this area here. So I'm going to have to be cautious of which uh, light source to choose from. And I think I've had requests for, um, or I know I've had requests for this kind of lighting scenario when, when there are multiple light sources. And um, I usually choose not to paint these kinds of settings just because they're, uh, you know, very difficult to do, kind of complicated to do. But, um, you know, I just felt like challenging myself with this one. So we're starting off with the cooler light. And uh, using a little bit of that grayish color that we mixed up for the sclera yesterday that was, that was still on the palette. Remember, this is still the same day for me as, uh, you know, when we put in the first uh, color stage for the face. So I do think that I'm going to relate this shape in terms of its value to the hand. All right, so now I need to switch to the middle tone brush. So here we have the middle tone brush. And again, what I'm looking for is the average color. And I'm not, and I'm prioritizing value, okay? So that, that's the main thing, you know, about splitting up uh, the color layers into different stages. 
So this is a little bit lighter here. Now, ideally, uh, I would have made that brush stroke cooler, much more bluish. Um, but I'm trying to train myself to see, kind of see in sequence, okay? So if you try to take everything in all at once, uh, there's a different kind of technique for that, and that's another technique that I'm writing about, which you know of, um, the alla prima approach. This is not the alla prima approach. This is the classical one uh, where we're, you know, prioritizing certain things in each stage, whereas in alla prima, it's going to be, uh, you know, everything done all at once. But in any case, uh, what am I talking about? <laughs> I'm building the light on on this area here. And again, I'm focusing on this light source coming from here primarily. So now with the, um, the middle tone brush, I'm going to keep trying to add more specificity to these planes. It's going to be a little darker here. Now we're starting to describe the knuckle. So with the hands, it's, it's usually a little safer to go uh, warmer and darker around the knuckles. So like around here, like I'm pointing at my knuckle right there. So around these areas. So we're going darker and warmer. But the, uh, um, the main thing is just to make it darker in value. I'm going to get darker down here. A little more light over here. Switching to the halftone brush. Lighter and pinker here. Now with the halftone brush, we're going to put in a little, little bit of light for the finger, fingernail over here. This fingernail. We're going to push this side plane here. A little darker near the edge of the thumb as it approaches the shadow, and for the um, and for this stage, so the local color stage, I might just leave the darks alone. Focus primarily on the lights and the half tones, and then in the perceptual color stage, then we will start to push the variation between the uh, shadow tone and the light. We don't really need it too much for this stage. Although I am missing, some, so I do have a dark brush for a reason, right? So I am missing a little bit of this. A dark underneath the hand over there. And I did realize upon editing the, uh, you know, the video for the underpainting of the hand, I have the fingers all wrong. So this, this one should go up a little more. Down. So this one goes down a little more. And this one goes down, but not as down as this or as high as that. Now returning to the halftone brush. Now push some of the warmth in here. And with the hands, especially with uh, you know, a female model, uh, definitely go softer with your edges. So that's why you see me, you know, going like this, making the edges very, very soft. Uh, you know, I can say now that I'm becoming a little more comfortable with hands. Remember I used to say I struggled with hands. I mean, I still struggle with hands, but I'm becoming much more comfortable with hands.
And this, this just goes to show you, the more you work at something, the more you will learn. We're pushing this side plane a little bit more, making it a little too pink, but that's okay. It's a little bit of a darker half tone over here for this, this pinky. The knuckle for the pinky. Darker over here. Then we have a little glimpse of light over here. And now I'm going to have to get a smaller brush. I'm going to put in the highlight that's coming in from the Electric lighting coming from the bottom. So let's see, right over here. I should put in the darker value for the thumb. It was missing. There we go. A little more light here. And it's just titanium white into the lighter region of the palette. Nothing too complicated there. So the highlight there. Let's see here. See, I don't want to put highlights everywhere. I just have to choose you know, which ones I want to prioritize. So this one, this one, and then this one. And I think that'll be about good for that. And now this hand is going to be rather simple. So I'm not going to go into too much, uh, you know, too much detail or too many smaller forms. Okay, so let's see here. This area is lighter, more pink. And then let's see if we can do a little trick here. And yes, looks like we can. So I'm using the uh, transparency of the paint. So there's a little bit of Neo McGill, or a lot more Neo McGill medium uh, on the brush right now. And see how I was able to create kind of a stained glass like effect. So the light of the underpainting is analogous to the sun to a, uh, to a stained glass, um, to a sheet of stained glass. So there we already have darker, yet still a lighter plane here, a lighter plane with the pinkish color, and then a darker plane that's still kind of pinkish over here. And I know that there's a lot of smaller forms that I need to put in here when I decide to close up the forms. Uh, but for this hand, since this, since this hand is kind of uh, out of focus, I'm not really going to focus too much on the hand, or on this one at least. So now I'm going in with the halftone brush. We're going to put this little darker shape here. And I think what I'll do is I'll just put a little more of a specific shape for the fingers. And then I think that'll be it for this hand. And we'll, when we get into the perceptual color stage, I may push some of these color uh, variations a little bit more. But I think in the final layer, in the, um, in the selective render, I will decide whether or not I want to put any more information into this hand. So let's see here. So this is pretty much just from the dark, uh, the darker region of the palette. With a small brush, just kind of getting the uh, dark shape, or I'm trying to put more specificity for the dark shape. A little bit of a contour over here. There we go. Super simple.
And so now we have established the uh, local colors with simple shapes. We've built a little more specificity onto the values that we uh, discovered in the underpainting. And now we've set up a nice ground so that once the uh, arm and the hands dry, we will be able to go in and add more specific color variation. So what that means is that the local color stage is now completed for the arms and the hands of this larger painting. And with that, I would like to mention, I am going to look through my uh, Instagram messages, my Facebook messages. Remember, I have a Facebook account too, uh, Yupari Artist, and then I have my Instagram, Yupari Fine Art, and then I have my website. So I'm gonna look through for um, pictures that you're sending me of your pets and uh, wildlife pictures, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, uh, film another pet portrait. Not sure if it'll be tomorrow's episode, but uh, be on the lookout for another pet portrait uh, video coming up soon. That being said, always remember in a world that can be so negative, be the spark that ignites positivity amongst all of us. I really do hope that these videos are helping you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll be back again with our next episode tomorrow.